In this video, what we want to see is the why gene mutation causes problems in the living organisms. Sometimes, not all the time, but uh, in a lot of cases, gene mutations can affect the organism by affecting the protein synthesis. Now, in the previous video, when we talked about gene mutation, we said that depending on how the mutation happens, it can affect the polypeptide sequence or the primary structure of the protein. So what's the big deal if the primary structure of the protein is affected, right? So let's give ourselves a situation now. A situation, when I talk about situations, these are not real life examples, but they can be used as models to describe how gene mutation can actually affect the living organisms. These are the potential effects of it. So let's say we have a DNA molecule and the highlighted region is called a gene. And the function of this gene is it codes for enzyme A. Enzyme A is just a made up enzyme. All right. So when the gene undergoes transcription, it produces the mRNA. And when the mRNA is translated, the tRNAs bring the amino acids to the ribosomes and thus a polypeptide is produced. And as I'm drawing out this polypeptide over here, this is the primary structure. And of course, this polypeptide chain will fold to become a tertiary structure to form a three-dimensional shape called enzyme A. And as you can see over there, enzyme A has a nice active site uh, where it's folded inwards so that it can bind to the substrate. That's basically it. So when the substrate binds to the enzyme and form the ES complex, the activation energy is reduced and the substrates can become products. So what I'm trying to just show you here is a normal gene codes for a normal enzyme and the normal enzyme is able to function. As I wrote down, the cell is able to produce a normally or the cell is able to produce a functioning enzyme. Now, conversely, what happens is if the gene becomes mutated, whether it's mutated due to base substitution, base addition, or base deletion, I've just drawn out like a red color region of the gene to show you where the mutation has happened. And because the mutation has happened over there, it will affect the codons on the mRNA, where I've just highlighted in red. Okay, just a simple part where I just highlighted that. And thus, when it undergoes translation, what will happen? Perhaps in this case, the primary structure is altered where I've changed the three amino acids, which were orange, into three green triangular amino acids, just to show you that the amino acids are slightly different. So the primary structure here is altered or changed. And will this affect the protein structure? Yes. Yes, it will. Because when it starts to fold or when it folds, to form the tertiary structure, it folds slightly differently. And therefore, look at the shape of the enzyme now, okay? The tertiary structure of the enzyme has changed. The active site is no longer complementary to the substrate. It cannot form the ES complex. And therefore, due to mutation, the cell produces a non-functioning enzyme. And this can be quite problematic for the cell because if a mutated gene codes for the non-functioning enzyme, the cell will not be able to carry out its metabolic reactions. And that can be detrimental to the cell. Now, another way in which mutations may occur, just to show you another sort of example, another potential way, let's say this is a gene that codes for the channel protein. And when the gene codes for and the gene undergoes transcription to produce mRNA, the mRNA undergoes translation to produce the protein, and the protein folds to form a channel protein, which is embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. And as you can see, the channel protein over here, it allows particles to pass through by facilitated diffusion. So a normal gene codes for a normal or functioning channel protein, and therefore the channel protein can carry out facilitated diffusion. Now, let's say if that particular gene undergoes mutation, and when that gene undergoes transcription and the mRNA undergoes translation, maybe what might happen is the channel protein's tertiary structure or quaternary structure, depending on the situation, will be affected. And as you can see here, because its structure is different, can it carry out facilitated diffusion? 
chances are it might not be able to carry out facilitated diffusion because the shape has been altered so it blocks the particles from passing through in this case so due to mutation facilitated diffusion cannot happen inside the cell these are some ways in which um, mutations can affect the structure and functions of the proteins they are coding for. Of course, then some of my students would say, all right, a normal gene will code for a normal protein and a mutated gene codes for a changed protein in terms of their structure. But why does the structure of the protein change? Like, is there a reason why the structure of the protein changes? Well, that we can talk about it. We can, we can try to explain this in a simple way. Okay. Now, let's say a normal gene undergoes transcription and produces the mRNA. And then the mRNA undergoes translation to produce the polypeptide chain. And the polypeptide chain falls to become a three-dimensional shape. For example, like an enzyme. I like to draw my enzyme as like a Pac-Man. Okay. That's just the way I like to represent it. All right. Now, let me just label out amino acid number one and amino acid number four. If you zoom in, amino acid number one and amino acid number four have, in my example here, number one has a positive ionic charge and number four has a negative ionic charge. Therefore, they are able to form ionic bonds. And the ionic bonds, in this case, helps to maintain the shape of the protein. In this case, it helps to maintain the shape of the active site since it is an enzyme. Now, let's say the gene undergoes mutation and the mRNA codon changes. Now, amino acid number four, due to the mutation, has been changed to a different type of amino acid, as I've represented in a blue color instead of an orange color. And if we zoom in, what has happened is amino acid number four, instead of having a negative charge, it has a positive charge. I, I'm just saying it's no longer negatively charged. And just for the sake of uh, making it even more interesting, I'm going to say that it has a positive charge. Now, if number one and number four both have positive charges, will they be able to form ionic bonds anymore? The answer is no, because positive and positive will repel each other. And because they repel each other, look at what happens to the shape of the enzyme or protein. It has become altered. That is how changing one amino acid can actually cause the entire shape of the polypeptide or protein to be altered. So what's the consequence then in this case? Well, you can predict it, right? Because if we compare the enzyme coded by a normal gene, can it undergo, and, and we see the substrate, the substrate is able to form the ES complex with the enzyme, okay? But for the other one, it has difficulty fitting into the active site of the enzyme. This is why mutations have problems and it can actually affect the structure and functioning of the protein. So enough looking at, um, you know, situations or theoretical explanations. Let's look at an actual example of gene mutation. For this example over here, we are going to be looking at hemoglobin synthesis. Before we talk about mutations, let's talk about the normal synthesis of hemoglobin. Now, to produce hemoglobin, hemoglobin requires two genes, the alpha globin gene and the beta globin gene. When the alpha globin gene undergoes transcription to produce the mRNA, it will then undergo translation and the alpha globin polypeptide is produced. Each circle represents the amino acid in the polypeptide. And also the same thing happens to the beta globin gene, it undergoes transcription and the mRNA undergoes translation and therefore it will then produce uh, the beta globin polypeptide. And each circle over there in the beta globin polypeptide represents its own amino acids. Now, the mRNA that I'm highlighting over there can be used twice because Look at this mRNA, it just basically goes out of the ribosome and it then just basically repeats itself and goes back into the ribosome and undergoes translation another time. Now, why would it do that? Because to produce hemoglobin, you need to have 
two alpha globin polypeptides and two beta globin polypeptides. So the same mRNA that came from the alpha globin gene undergoes translation twice, and the same thing for the beta globin as well. It will also undergo translation twice to produce two chains each. And those two chains will then fold to form a quaternary protein. And I'm also adding the heme group, which I've represented in a blue color. I hope you can see that, those small little blue circles over there. Each of them are the heme group. So the hemoglobin is a quaternary protein made up of four polypeptide chains. And each polypeptide chain has a heme group. And remember, the characteristics of hemoglobin, it is globular, which means to say it's kind of ball-shaped, it's water-soluble, and it can carry oxygen very easily. The hemoglobin is then found inside the red blood cell, and when the red blood cell has this hemoglobin, it gives the red blood cells a biconcave shape. The reason why it needs to have a biconcave shape is to increase its total surface area to volume ratio, which we will talk about in chapter, chapter 8, okay, which is about transport in animals. Now, so point of the matter I'm just trying to make is a normal alpha globin gene and a normal beta globin gene undergoes transcription and translation to produce two alpha globin polypeptides and two beta globin polypeptides, and the Polypeptides will then fold to become hemoglobin, added together with the heme groups, okay, found inside the red blood cells to give it a biconcave shape. Now, what happens is the beta globin gene, a normal beta globin gene, usually in one of its sequence, it will have the basis CTT. And of course, the mRNA, it will have a codon of GAA. And the beta globin, when it undergoes translation, it will code for an amino acid called glutamic acid. This is a normal beta globin gene, right? Now, what happens is, in gene mutation, a base substitution happens in the beta globin gene, where CTT is replaced with CAT, cat. Okay, that's why. So how I like to remember it is, cat is evil, okay? Uh, I, I don't think cats are evil. Actually, no, I do think they're evil, but I also think they're our um, gods. So, <laughs> I mean, look, I have three cats and they basically rule my life, all right? So, uh, hello, coconut, cookie, and socks. This is a shout out to all three of you. Okay, now back to this. So, in base substitutions, uh, CTT has been changed to CAT. What are the effects on the mRNA? Well, the mRNA will then undergo, uh, when it undergoes transcription, the mRNA will have a codon of GUA instead. And when GUA gets translated, it will change the amino acid to valine. So technically, in the beta globin polypeptide, only one amino acid is changed. So some students go, well, it's not really a big deal. You only just changed one amino acid. Will it cause a big problem? In this case, oh yes, it causes a huge problem to the shape of the hemoglobin. Look at the shape of the beta globin polypeptides. They have, instead of having a ball shape, they kind of have like a fibrous shape. The alpha globin also cannot fold properly due to this problem here. So the shape of the hemoglobin is now more fibrous. It does not, it is less water soluble and it doesn't carry oxygen easily. And does this affect the shape of the red blood cell? Because the hemoglobin is inside the red blood cell yet, right? Yes, it does. The shape of the red blood cell, instead of being biconcave, it becomes a sickle-shaped red blood cells due to the altered hemoglobin. With just one base substitution, the entire structure of hemoglobin is thrown into disarray and it will significantly affect the shape of the red blood cell. This gene mutation will actually cause a particular disease we know as sickle cell anemia, which can be quite a serious disease as well. So gene mutations can, just by changing one amino acid, sometimes can cause significant impacts on the person's characteristics, as shown in this diagram here. Now, if you notice, I'm actually saying gene mutations can be harmful. I'm not saying gene mutations are always harmful. 
because there are specific situations in which gene mutation can be beneficial to the organism. We will talk about these examples in chapter 10 when we are studying antibiotics and its effects on bacteria. And we will also look at this in chapter 17 when we are studying evolution and natural selection.